Okay, that sounds good. We'll go ahead and get started here. So this is the breakout showcase for the Kloss Omaha Bolted Joint Witness Mark Senior Design Team and the project we got to do with them. So without further ado, I'm David Reichman. I'm the team lead. We'll see more about me later. I'm Jared Thonin. I'm one of the mechanical engineers working on this project, uh, partnered with the computer science department. And yes, this is one of our dual discipline teams. Yes. So very interesting. So we'll start off with our company overview of Kloss Omaha, mainly worked with us. Uh, they're the home of the Lexion Combine, where they built and produce most, if not all, of their combines for the United States. Um, it's one of the most modern facilities, uh, very up to date. Uh, most of the combines are hand built by all their technicians. Each, every bolt is put on, which, are, which is the main concern for our project. We were actually fortunate enough to be able to uh, tour their entire facility and see every step of the process from the engine being built, put together, and tracks, wheels being put on every panel. It's very interesting to see, especially for me, as I came from a lot of automotive my whole life working on cars. It was super interesting to see how all the systems on the inside of these work, all the hydraulic systems, anything that works on the inside of these. It's a really amazing experience to see. Yeah, so I'll introduce our stakeholders here. They're sitting right up front for us. Uh, this is uh, Matt, Matthew Cook, Cock, Cook, Cook. Uh, he's the Vice President of Marketing over at Cloth of Omaha. Uh, he helps us out a ton, really big on the design process. We always went back and forth on our sponsor meetings, going longer than Bill would often like, but having a good time talking about what was going on. Uh, also with us and for with our uh, our project here is Chase Gordon. Goddard. Goddard? So sorry. Uh, he's a manufacturing engineer over at Kloss. Another one of our big points of contacts who bounced ideas off of and gave us feedback and thoughts on the whole design process as we went over really solving our problem and trying to s figure out a solution for the problem that I'll, I think I pitch now. So moving oh. on, we have our faculty and staff and coach. <laughs> so we start off with our project manager, William Browning. We have our tribe lead, uh, Vino Varium, and we have our coach, Katie Badger, who is also here. Oh, okay. Thank you. And then we have a very diverse team of different majors and uh, different disciplines. Uh, I'm the product manager, David Reichman. I'm a computer science student, senior here. Uh, we have a development manager, Jerry Thornton over there, who is a mechanical engineer, along with, I believe, a math minor. Yes. Uh, we also have our team members, uh, Bowden, who is another mechanical engineer for us, another David, David Prez, who's a computer engineering a student, and we have Derek Mason, who is a sophomore engineer with us, and is the only sophomore, I believe. The rest of us are seniors getting out of here at the end of this. I could just jump in really quick. I thought this is a really uh, interesting experience to see all the fields coming together. It's more of a real workplace environment that we had to work in. You don't always just work with computer science. You don't always just work with mechanical engineers. It was really interesting to see Two mechanicals, um, computer science. I mean, we. I mean, if you look at us, we're all different majors. It's really, really interesting to see all of us have different viewpoints, different expertises, something unexpected that we'd pull from that you wouldn't expect from their major. And it was just really outstanding to work with everyone in there. Yeah, definitely. It was so interesting to see we all come at a different way of pro solving problems yeah. and a different problems we can solve. So definitely interesting to see that come to light in the team. So the problem we sort of got from Kloss, uh, Kloss has uh, the thing called witness marks. Uh, it's uh, sort of when you tighten the bolt all the way down with your torque gun, you take it off and you mark it. You say, I tighten this and I affirm that it is tight to spec and it is safe for the standard and it meets our, the, what they want to show their clients. Now, sort of a problem that arises with this is there's human error in this. You might miss a bolt. You might think you got it, you didn't. You might, excuse me, not run the gun all the way down. There's any number of things that might sometimes come up and cause them to miss or not have these marks where they should be. <clears throat> oh my gosh. And so this is provides an opportunity for us to so solve this problem and to come up and like fix this uh, margin of error, that is, uh, if we had to somehow apply these marks on their own without having a human have to do, be the one to do the marking. It would also be more efficient for them rather than taking the time to go back that it's just already done when you finish your task. So our solution to the problem was to make a system that utilizes an accelerometer that feeds into an algorithm that um, sums all the torque values. We've had a lot of talk about this. I still am not totally understanding as mechanical of how the algorithm works, but it feeds the algorithm 
that takes the accel acceleration data from three different axes and then tells the uh, marking device to fire when it believes that it is the proper time to fire. Um, how this fires is by taking an air feed from the air that's going into the torque wrench itself. Uh, we have a pressure regulator on our device just to make sure we don't blow out any valves or blow out anything that isn't regulated to uh, over, I think it was about 60 to 80 PSI. Uh, part of the air is split again, goes into a reservoir which has a bladder inside and the air pressure compresses the bladder, sends it up through a tube to a solenoid up there where the other air going, coming from a solenoid comes into that. They meet, it atomizes the marking medium and pushes it through a nozzle and puts a precise amount of marking medium, which we ended up using dicum, which is an acetone base, basically a paint. And this allows us to mark the bolt automatically as soon as the clutch vibration is reached. And that allows us to make this mark um, at a higher uh, accuracy than marking it by hand. Yeah, and so the value this provides to Kloss is that, you know, this product really works uh, for a framework for them to really uh, increase the, like, performance of it, uh, get even more reliable shots out. Uh, uh, ideally, another team comes along and makes it smaller and lighter so it runs around with anyone at the shop. It's nothing, no big deal. You don't even think it's there. You don't even have to know about it at all. Uh, this should improve the consistency of witness marks on top of bolts. They should always be there all the time uh, and help with that accuracy of them. Uh, potentially increase the accuracy of the shot again, uh, and enables Kloss to streamline the assignment process so that no one has to come back and redo this. It makes quality checking way easier because we know one's there all the time forever. Cool. And then as a thank you, we'd like to invite our sponsors up. We have a little token for them. And we have one for our coach as well. <laughs>